2020, uh, the pre-stream chatter is brought to you by no one because I am not sponsored, nor do I. Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's pre-stream chatter was meta pre-stream chatter. Uh, what we're going to do today, I think last time I said we we're going to look at creating a semantic wiki from a single file, or maybe I didn't say that, uh, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to do that anyway. Uh, instead, uh, what I have done previously uh, off stream is I um, was trying to find a way to compute occultations by Jupiter's moons uh, efficiently. And it turns out I could not do that. I didn't figure out how to do that, so I computed them inefficiently. Um, I will go ahead and show you some of the results here if I can remember where the hell I put them on the other machine and move them over here as part of my never preparing for anything. Um, oh, actually, let's see. Uh, Okay, stand by, stand by. Please stand by. Okay, that... Oh, shit. Went to the wrong place. Please stand by some more. Uh, and I know you can't see what I'm doing. Um, believe me, you're better off. Uh, but give me a second here while I put this crap into here. Crap put. I think that's enough. Yeah, okay. So now let's go over here and take a look at some of the results. Um, and there's some of them are actually pretty good. Uh, amazingly. Okay. Um, so these are the, the numbers that you see here are the NAF ID. So 901 would be uh, Charon, which is Pluto's first moon. Uh, I don't know why I gave that as an example. It's a terrible example. Um, and there's a bunch of other really, really good ones here. And we can use these to find out when, um, um, when various occultations will occur. And just to take a quick look at, like, this is what we meet us, the 10th moon of Jupiter. And it basically says how far on each sort of cycle, um, how many degrees apart uh, Tetha, this Teth, not sorry, Tethys, um, Mimas, or whichever Jupiter's 10th moon is, is from given star, in this case, 122. And you could see, like, you know, this is really far away from, from it most of the time. These are local minima. But obviously, we want to look at the minima, uh, you know, we want to see the stars it gets closest to, and that would be sort minus K5n. And if we do that, we see that it is actually gets really, really close to star 24762 in the HYG catalog. Um, for right now, we're not going to do any more with this. We could do it for all the results files. Uh, well, actually, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, but there's, there's going to be a problem. So here it is for all the results files, which probably might take a little bit longer than I expected. The, one of the things I did include was uh, Earth's own moon, uh, which occult stars all over the place, almost constantly, in fact. Um, so, well, this was, this was a mistake. Um, and I did include the planets as well, so, oh, wow, okay. So, we're going to skip over, um, so we're going to do this now. We're going to skip over the moon ones, because those are sort of too obvious. Um, and any place where you see a negative number in the fifth column, and there's a bunch of spaces here, but that just doesn't mean anything. Um, so this is Venus, Venus, Mercury, Mercury, Venus, Venus, Mercury, Mercury. This is maybe one of the more interesting ones because this is the asteroid Ceres, or Cirrus. Um, Venus, this is another asteroid, I don't know which one it is. And these three rows are interesting because um, they're moons of Saturn. Uh, they are uh, the 14th, 4th, and 12th moons of Saturn, I don't know any of them. Uh, the first moon of Saturn is Titan, that's one of the big ones. So these are some of the interesting cases where um, if these calculations are correct, um, a moon of Saturn, well, let's just find out which one this is real quick. Um, Calypso, uh, will, will occult a star, this star, but Saturn itself may not. This is one of, this is the, one of those corner cases where the Saturn itself may not eclipse this moon, uh, eclipse this star, but Calypso might. And in fact, I'm now curious enough uh, and it does look like three of uh, Saturn's moons are going to eclipse uh, this star uh, about the same time, but not Saturn itself. The, the important thing here is to note that if, because Saturn itself isn't doing it, this may not be listed anywhere. Uh, so this is April 11th, uh, 2024. So let's go ahead and... Um, uh, let's go ahead and watch this break again. Uh, let's try this one. And again, I know we've done this like a hundred times, but I kind of like it. And I think in this case, we're seeing something 
which I haven't looked at this before. I have computed the results, but I haven't looked at them. Um, so this might be something interesting. We might see something uh, a little bit unique here, wherein we have um, wherein we have a moon of Sat a moon of Saturn occulting something, whereas Saturn itself does not. So we're looking at April 11th, 2024. Um, by the way, Calsky, it turns out, the thing I would check against, um, only goes like to the end of this year, to the end of the year 2020, but I think that's uh, the author is intentionally uh, stopping. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make um, a note to, to, to annoy him. Uh, annoy Calstar author. Is it Calstar? Uh, um, Cal Sky, I think it is. Cal, Cal Star or something else. If you know what it is, uh, I know what it is, but if you know what it is, then you know what it is. Um, Cal Sky author about going to end of 2020 only, and this might be intentional. Uh, but that does mean I can't check these results against his results. Uh, it also means if we're going to be looking for actually interesting um, occultations at any given point, um, I mean, yeah, upcoming occultations, we're going to have to tighten it up a bit, but that's fine. Okay, so here is Saturn. Somewhere around here is a freaking star. It's, oh, hello. That is a gorgeous looking star there. Uh, if I could get onto it. There we go. H Aquarius. Ooh, that's not the one we want, though. That's a 6.15 magnitude star. <laughs> that's interesting, though. Uh, and the star we're looking for is, according to this... Uh, 5.44 magnitude, and it is this star. And let's find out what it is by looking at it in the HYG catalog. Again, the HYG number is not the same as any other number, so it's a little bit ugly, but th you know, the sort of unavoidable. Okay, let's see what this is. This is 83 Aquarius, um, if I'm reading this correctly. That's interesting. Um, Okay, there's 81 Aquarius, so let's see if we can find 83. There we go. Oh, okay, so is this the same thing as H Aquarius? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So here we have... Okay, now it looks to me like if we, we're going to go ahead and do a little time thing here, but it looks to me like Saturn itself is also going to eclipse it, so I'm a little bit skeptical as to why... Oh, hello, 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 hello. Check it out. Saturn does not eclipse it, but its moons do eclipse uh, this this star, at least at where we are right now, which I think is Albuquerque, because that's where I keep it set to. Um, and presumably, I mean, we can uh, look for this in the Saturn file, which would be 601. And then we'll do a less here, but then we're going to do a sort minus. And by the way, um, actually it should be space um, because we want it. And actually we could put a point zero zero. Oh, don't do that. Um, okay. So according to this, the closest Saturn gets pretty close, but it doesn't actually occult it anywhere in the freaking on the freaking planet Earth. So even if we went over here, and uh, assuming I'm right, which I could be very wrong, um, uh, well, of course, now you have to remember, Saturn has a very small parallax because it's really far away. Um, okay, so cool. This is actually uh, a case which maybe is unknown um, where one of Saturn's moons, or actually it appears that more than one of Saturn's moons is going to do it, uh, may occult... Um, 83 Aquarius, even though Saturn itself doesn't. Now, I'm actually sort of curious to see if anyone knows about this. Um, they probably may. I mean, it's not that rare. It is one of the weirder things we're looking at, if we can find a freaking... Uh, okay. Um, 83 Aquarius Occult. I don't think we're going to get anything. Oh, hello. 1954... I actually want to see what the hell this is. Okay. Well, it looks like someone's one-upped me 
a billion years before I was born. Well, actually, not that long before I was born. Um, but a long time ago. Um, now, are these lunar occultations, or are these different kinds of occultations? I might have to do this. And I think this is a public book, actually. Um, apparently, it says Age of the Moon here, suggesting these are all uh, lunar occultations by our, our moon, and some of them are pretty faint, actually. So still pretty damn cool, by the way. I mean, not the kind of... Okay, let's look for the 83 Aquarii. Oh my god. No, it's not quite 83 Aquarii, but that's still pretty damn good. Okay. Um, so 23,300 results, not, not bad. Uh, now we're going to have to add in the year 2024. Wow. Um, okay. So we're going to have to add the year 2024 has to be in there. 83 Aquarius, which I think can be written some other way. Oh, wow. Um, uh, let's see. Totality over America. This does not sound like the year 2024. And what month is it now? I mean, I'm again sort of cheating. Wait, wait, wait. I just realized something. Why is this saying the star is magnitude 6.15? Because um, unless I'm misreading this... Um, so we can find it again. Probably not. Um, okay... Um, this is 83 Aquarii, um, 5.440, so this is a little bit bad in the sense that um, Stellarium's magnitude differs significantly um, from from um, HYG catalogs. Let's make sure this is one, yeah, it is 113, yep, yeah, that's, uh, that's the HIP catalog number and uh, Hipparchos. A. So is there a B? Hang on. It's a double star, so... A is usually the brighter of the two elements. Um... No, I guess I guess it is the brighter of the... Yeah, so... Okay, not great. But... <clears throat> let's see if anyone has... Now, the problem, of course, is because this is a faint star, it's possible that other people think it's too faint to mention its occultation. So, um... So, not great... Um, but we're going to have a bigger problem in just a minute. Um, ten results. Um, um, okay. And to be honest, I do not see it. Instead of 88, 83 Aquarii, maybe we can call it hip. To be square, I think I've done that joke before, though. 11396. Let's make sure that's correct, though. One one three nine nine six, and this maybe will give us my God. Um, I don't think this is it. I think I think we found something that, if not new, is at least not on Google. Now, of course, not everything in the world is on Google, but this is actually not what I was going to show you, uh, or myself. What it's going to show you is that you'll see some of these files are only 736 bytes in size. Uh, so what does that mean? Obviously there's there's some... Um, it doesn't... it either lists no conjunctions or very few con uh, occultations, or there's another problem with it, and the answer is there's another problem with it. And the other problem is that... Um, for all of these 736 byte files, and there's a lot of them, Spice does not have a radius for them. It doesn't know how big they are. Uh, and therefore it cannot do the computations we need to determine if they occult anything. Because if you consider a, um, a moon to be just a single point, having a point occult a point is geometrically essentially impossible. Uh, because we are using real numbers on computers, we have a finite precision. So in theory, um, you could have a point occult a point, but this is also going to be wrong because uh, real moons do have radiuses. And in fact, and this is the interesting part-ish for me, um, 
the radiuses are printed uh, in, uh, let's see, I think this is the wrong one, but let's see, this is the wrong one. Um, there's a, um, I think this is also the wrong one. Um, Jupiter, Moon, I think it's called the Fact Sheet. Um, and why I do have this bookmark, but for some reason it doesn't. Never mind. Okay, but you'll notice here that the radius in kilometers, which is right here, does appear for many of these Jovian satellites, even though it's not in the, even though Spice doesn't know about them. So the question is, uh, why? And the answer is, well, we have an answer, because um, I actually looked at this before. Um, if we go into the uh, kernels, I think here. Oh, come on. Where am I? I think I'm in the wrong place. Oh, actually, hang on. The kernel, the, the thing that we're interested in here is called, uh, if you can find it, uh, is the pick file. Oh, this is the wrong one, actually. Um, this file here is the interesting file. Um, and it should also be the same one in um, max kernels. Oh, come on, what is it? BC max kernel. Um, I might have actually screwed something up different from what I thought it screwed up. Okay, so what is this file and what does it tell us? And, um, well, this is the file, I certainly hope, because otherwise I'll be screwed. Um, by the way, uh, this is the guy at NASA that I know. He's, his name's going to come up anyway, Nat Bachman. Wonderful person. Uh, but don't email him because he is busy. Um, okay. Um, so this tells you what's, what's in here. Um, actually, I think it even says, radii of bodies of satellites were available of asteroids, of comets. By the way, we do need to also look and see whether comets will eclipse. And I need to put that in here. Because um, that one I don't think I've done. Let me check real quick. I think, I think I was going to do comets, and I never got around to it. I definitely did asteroids, but comets might have been a no-go. So anyway, this is... Um, oh, what the hell am I doing? Okay. So this is uh, basically the uh, asteroids, uh, comets, moons, all this good stuff. Um, and they've added a few to this, this, this file. Um... And now, by the way, notice that here they're going to make a, a claim, an important claim, that uh, the orientation models for natural satellites and asteroids have in some case changed substantially, so users are investigate, urge to investigate, blah, blah, blah. In other words, don't rely on this accuracy, which we won't. So this is a, um, this is a something we don't want to necessarily rely on deeply. Uh, read I... Um... So, you know, this is the size, shape of blah, 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 blah. Um, shape models, blah, 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 blah. And let's see. So body 399 is the Earth. It's NAFID 399. Um, but let's go with some of the more interesting ones here. Boy, it's going to take a while. Pla sun and planets. It is Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so we'll skip it. Uh, body 299, 399, 499, Here's the ones that are sort of interesting. Uh, 401 and 402 are f f Phobos and Deimos, uh, but here's where here's where the problem occurs. You'll see that we have the first five satellites of Jupiter here, bunch more here, but Jupiter's got like 78 bajillion satellites, or maybe just 78. The rest of these radii are not listed, even though, contradiction, they appear on this page, kind of, because um, these are estimates, but but at least they appear here. Okay, so. Um, So the issue here is, um, can we add these radii so we can make our own computations, even though they're not going to be very accurate? And 601 is Saturn. By the way, uh, six, sorry, 601 is Titan, sa Saturn's largest moon, I think. Uh, no, it's not. I guess 606 is going to be Titan, because 601 is tiny. Um, but again, these are Saturn's moons here. I don't know why they capitalized it in one place, didn't capitalize it in another place. Um, 
And again, in cases where they don't know the actual ellipsoid dimensions, they just pretend it's a sphere. Like they say here, we use the mean radius for all three axes. Okay, and again, only goes up to uh, satellite number 18, though Saturn has a lot more, has many more satellites. Okay, so now I um, need to see if I've effed anything up. That is the official term, by the way, effing things up. Uh, let me take a quick look here uh, I have to see what's going on. Um, I want to check, yeah, okay. Uh, this version is version 10, and I don't know when it's dated, but uh, we, could, we could look at it. Uh, well, okay, 2011, October 21st. So this might, this is about, you know, eight and a half years old now. Uh, maybe the moons hadn't been discovered then, maybe they haven't added then, maybe the numbers aren't accurate enough. Lots of reasons for not doing this. There is actually a more modern kernel, um, but it turns out to be in a hidden directory inside of the NAFE site, and it doesn't actually add anything to this file. It, it just replaces some of the constants. Let me go ahead and, let me go ahead and bring it over real quick. Um, uh, just for fun, this is the version 11. Um, and I will just bring it in, just for fun, I'll bring it into, uh, into this machine here. What the hell? Oh. Okay, hang on now. It's being obnoxious to me. Oh, there we go. All right. So let's take a quick look at the file that I've just copied over that doesn't exist officially anywhere. I just happened to find it by mistake almost. Uh, this is the 11 file. And these are the uh, some changes based on the 2015 report. However, I don't think it actually adds anything. I don't think it adds any um, any satellite data. And we could find that out by looking here. Body 10 is the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, uh, our moon, and then here are the moons again. But again, you're going to see that uh, for Jupiter, it stops with the 16th moon of Jupiter. It's all gone from there. Okay, so what are we going to do to correct this injustice? Uh, well... I've tried to avoid doing this, but it, it, it kind of is going to be unavoidable now. We're going to have to copy some of these from, um, from this file uh, into, uh, into our own file, which I think I've actually created one of. Um, I think I started creating, nope, not here though, uh, my own PC, uh, P, uh, file, um, this, this type of file we have here, the PCK file. Um, do I mean TPC? I do. It's PCK star something TPC. And you could see that, oh my god, I have two of them. PC Jupiter. I considered adding uh, like a body 539 radii there. Um, didn't get very far, obviously. But this is the kind of thing we, we can create our own file and use it um, for the moons for which NASA does not give us the, these values. Now, there is something else that, you know, always, whenever I see something, it comes up. Um, so one thing I was worried about was, real quickly, um, the BSP files are basically polynomials, so I'm comfortable with that. The files that are not BSP files are the ones that are sort of interesting. Uh, I mean, the ones that give us data that isn't polynomial data, for example, radiuses and stuff. Uh, so I happen to know this file is just Earth orientation parameters. Um, these files are frames that I've created. Uh, ooh. Now that's something I didn't look at before. But we included it, so obviously, uh, they're not gonna, it, the stuff we're looking for is not gonna be in here. Um, the thing that concerned me, though, is I don't know if there's a NAFE 013 TLS file. I don't think the TLS, I think these are leap second files, to be honest. Um, and they are. So that is not what we're looking for. Um, so I guess the only thing we could be worried about is I maybe there's a more updated version of this file, um, which gives the data. F well, it's for GM431, which is fairly recent. So this might be the same thing as, um, uh, let's see. Um, wow. Right, so this tells you what they're going to give us values for. Uh, GM is the gravitational mass parameter. Oh, and these are just GMs. They don't actually have uh, radii in here. Okay, so we're going to have to add our own radii. 
So how are we going to do this? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look to see which of these are missing. Now I could use the uh, 740 byte or 736 byte. Um, these are asteroids actually, but hang on. <laughs> I could just use like, for example, any 736 byte file is uh, we need a radii for, but instead we can actually do a little bit better. We can fgrep um, could not be found, so that's our first fgrep. Um, get a bunch of these. We can use minus h because we don't really need the name of the file they're not found in. Okay, and then we're going to go uh, body, some number of digits, underscore radii, and I think I'm going to allow that to be case insensitive, uh, just in case they messed it up. And then we can print the, uh, the, the name of the body. So this is these are the bodies that do not have um, radii in um, in the uh, in the PCK TPC files we're looking for. So what we're going to do with these? Well, we're not quite ready to use them as is. Um, so we'll call these no radii one dot text. Okay. Oh, did I sort them? I didn't mean to sort them. Hang on. And we'll also do a unique just in case. Well, okay. Hang on. All right, so let's make, there shouldn't be any um, repeats in here, and they're not. Okay, so now what we're going to do, so the idea here is we want to add stuff in pretty quickly and then use a, an automatic program uh, to, uh, to fix it. So we don't necessarily want to be going in here um, and typing in the, the values the way they do. In other words, we don't necessarily want to be using this... Um, we don't necessarily want to be using this, um, uh, damn it, come on. We don't necessarily want to be printing all of this right here each time. We're going to get a short version of the, uh, of the values and then use a Perl script to get this all printed out nicely. Because when I'm copying and pasting from somewhere else, obviously, uh, you want to use the minimum effort required here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this to no radii 2 because I do not want to deal with asteroids for right now. So let's go ahead and get rid of all the asteroids from this file. There's a lot of motherfuckers, aren't there? Um, okay. Now, 391, these are all, three, uh, 3 is the Earth, 399 is the Earth, 301 is our moon, 3 is the very center of our Earth-Moon system. Uh, these, are, these are, I think, Lagrange points or other fictional points. These are not points that uh, actually, uh, they, they're not actually planetary bodies, they're just abstract points. So we don't need these. So here's where the fun starts. So there's two bits of fun going on here at the same time. One is, well, one is I'm going to cut and paste. But the second is, because these are given in Roman numerals, I get to convert between Roman numerals and, uh, and what we call Arabic numbers, numbers, the ones we use. OK. Um, It appears, this is breaking news here, it's all breaking news, and you can guess what it's about. Uh, yes, all Albuquerque pub, all New Mexico schools are closed due to the coronavirus. All, I know it doesn't matter to anyone who's not in New Mexico or if you're not watching this live, and no one is, this doesn't matter to you, but it's interesting news for us. Uh, New Mexico, the entire state, not just Albuquerque, has decided to close schools on March the 12th. That's today, so I think this announcement is saying from now on. Um, we're closing for three weeks starting on March 16th. So I guess they're open tomorrow. Um, and our governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham, has, has done this. So Friday the 13th, tomorrow, bad day, unlucky day, unless you're a student, because you're going to be freaking out of school. Uh, you've Presumably, you're supposed to be uh, learning. Um, uh, so everyone's still supposed to be there on Friday, tomorrow. But after that, so that was just kind of a cool story I ran into by mistake. Um, OK, so now I'm going to convert Roman numerals into Arabic numerals and copy down the radii. Sounds like fun. Um, this might be more difficult than I thought. Um, partly because I have a little bit, I, I'm not really great on space here, but on the other hand, um, we do have, uh, you know, this, this is not going to take, the Emacs is not going to take a lot of room here. 
All right, so 17, that is going to be XVII. Come on, maybe needs a new pair of shoes. Uh, by the way, some of these are inconsistent in that. Um, hello, 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 Isooptilator. Welcome. Um, by the way, I don't know if you were in the stream like one second ago, but all New Mexico schools are closed. At least uh, public schools are closed. Um, we are now trying... No, it's very sad. Um, yeah, go to APS.edu if you want to or anywhere. Uh, yeah, apparently New Mexico is going to take the coronavirus uh, as seriously as Seattle. Uh, the governor has declared uh, tomorrow apparently schools will not be closed. Apparently everyone's going to show up. But starting Monday, um, everyone's out of school. And again, I personally think this is great. I think maybe children might finally start getting an education. Well, I knew that um, I knew that you didn't go to school, or at least not to uh, not to an elementary school. But I thought you might be interested, although I don't know why I thought that. I guess it's interesting to me because I've been watching the coronavirus news all day, and what's amazing to me not about the virus itself, but the news. Like literally every few minutes, something interesting and major happens. Um, major League B Baseball canceling spring training. National Hockey League canceling the regular season. Um, NBA, I think, canceled yesterday, so that's not new news. Trump and Pence both uh, have at least met with someone who later uh, tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, I mean, the amount of news coming in on this thing, shit's messed up, I would have to agree with you. Um, but I, I think it's still more the panic is more dangerous than the virus, but the panic is amazing. I mean, until earlier today... APS, because I was looking at this, APS in New Mexico were saying they're monitoring the situation, but they don't think um, they don't think it'll be necessary to close schools. They said that literally earlier today. That was what an announcement made on, on local news channels. Uh, you know, we're not going to close schools for this, and now, boom, we're closing schools. Literally within a few hours, they've changed their mind about that. So coronavirus, big pandemic that will um, potentially destroy the planet. If it does, and if it turns out that aliens, or maybe even uh, aliens, yes, exactly. Most people get them, yeah, exactly. Um, and a lot of people get over it without without it being serious. Um, but uh, so it probably won't destroy the Earth, but the panic might. Um, so if it does, and you're some sort of alien race, or even a, you know another formed race on on Earth, and you're watching this uh, through some weird YouTube preservation mechanism. Yeah, and that's the other the other sort of problem with it, of course, is, uh, yeah, and that's also a problem with it. It's got a long incubation period, which means you can have it, spread it around, and not even be sick. So you don't even know, um, I mean, you don't even know when to stop, you know, even if you're very conscientious and don't like killing old people, uh, you don't know when to stop visiting old people or when to stop being in public because you're gonna be symptomless um, until it's too late. Uh, I am an old people myself, uh, but I am ready to die. I want to emphasize that. Um, I feel the coronavirus uh, is, has a lot of... Oh, blow, blow me. Um, I am an old people, so... Yeah, so let's, let's to, to hell with the coronavirus. Um, I am, I'm proud uh, to be killed by a virus named after the sun's atmosphere and, and perhaps a beer. Although I guess now it's being called um, COVID-19, which, by the way, if I ever made a porno video, it would star co-eds who are 19 years old, and I would, I'm going to call it COVID-19, because that is a very cool name for a porn video. So I think going from Corona to COVID-19, not any less, um, not any less, uh, less attractive of a name. I mean, it's still a pretty good name. Um, I think if you're going to give it a dumb name, it's got to be like poopy pants, baby diapers, smelly foo-foo, or something. But to give it, you know, COVID-19 still sounds pretty hot. I mean, I'd kind of watch that if I didn't know what it was. Yes, there's co-eds, there's video, there are 19, COVID-19, coming soon to a theater near you, or any crowded place near you, because that's how it does it. So anyway, that was the uh, exciting not having anything to do with the stream news. Um, with the stream, what I'm trying to do here is and this, by the way, may actually be literally, yes, I am, I, am a, I am a terrible person. This actually could be literally something new, and even what I've done so far could be new. 
I'm trying to find out when Jupiter's moons might occult a star. So people have done, you know, Jupiter occulting star before, maybe some of the moons, but these are moons that even um, Sea Spice doesn't know about. I mean, it knows about them, obviously, uh, but it doesn't have anything about them. However, there is information known about them, and I'm going to try to now put them into a form where Sea Spice can understand them. So that is the very unexciting part of this stream, uh, as compared to the fact that apparently everyone is going to die of the coronavirus. Uh, you know, and I'm hoping to find maybe one occultation before everyone dies. So, you know, everyone can say, hey, look, there's a moon of Jupiter uh, eclipsing a bright star. Not Jupiter itself, but a moon. And it's one of those faint moons that, unless Barry had done this, we wouldn't know anything about it. Um, although that, those would be terrible last words to go out on. Yay, lunar eclipse, dead, boom, dead. So, again, maybe my parting gift to humanity, uh, and by parting gift to humanity, I mean humanity is parting, not necessarily me, uh, is, to, is to try to compute some, uh, some uh, stellar occultations by the fainter and lesser known moons of Jupiter. Uh, I still think this is a worthy cause, because um, the other thing I could be working on is a cure for the coronavirus, but I just don't think that's as important. So, anyway, so if you have any questions, comments about uh, what I'm doing, about the coronavirus, about your life in general, about uh, yeah, pretty much anything. Coronas in general. So let me find number 17 real quick. Uh, so they should be in order after 17. And when I say that, of course, okay, there's 17. Uh, no, it's not 17. Okay, that's number 17. Okay, great. 15, 17. Now I'm kind of suspicious, though. Um, okay. All right, so if I'm reading this correctly, 17, 18, and 19 um, are right next... No, no, sorry, that's not... God damn, these are not in order. All right. Not cool. Alrighty. Okay. So apparently, um, yeah, this is not this is not cool. So apparently, I'm going to need a freaking lookup table as well, um, which just goes to prove that everything is, uh, even before the coronavirus, life sucked. So anyway. Um, so I guess what we're going to do here is see if we can get these all kind of... Well, we only need part of this because we only need the radius assists here. Um, so I'm going to do grep 517 they fight these, but obviously that's not going to be the only one. Okay, so we do need to kind of check. Um, yeah, I didn't think that was going to fly. Let's see if we can do space. There we go. Um, okay. Oh, uh, there's got to be a way to do this. Um, unfortunately, they, they're not consistent with their, whether they use J or not, like they don't use it here, so I can't always use that. Um, what the fuck have I done? Um... It is Pomodoro time, but I'm going to go ahead and skip it because we've got a uh, guest in the chat. Um, alrighty. You know what? Maybe... Yeah, maybe... God damn it. Uh, I mean, I'm tempted to copy and paste this somewhere, but I'm worried that I'll lose columnar align the column alignment here. Um... So that's what I'm trying to do here, real quick. Kalehore. So it's Kalehore is 517, this is Kalehore, this is 4. 518 is Temesto, but it's not in any order, so I'm hoping that I'll find like a batch of them in order. Temesto. No, it's the wrong. There's two charts here, too, so that's always a lot of fun. Four, radius of four. 
519 is Maga Cleave, my joy, your mama. Whoa. Maga Clite. Yeah, this is, this was, I thought I was being clever. Um. Oh, is it Mega Clite? Oh, nice, it's not even spelled correctly. It's Maga Clite here, and it's Mega Clite, so that's something we need to look into. This is this is lots of fun. I'm I, I'm going to complain to these guys, even if it's the last thing I do, and that could very literally be the last thing I do. So anyway, 519 megaclite or megaclite or whatever you want to call it. Radius is this is the radius column, right? Yeah, 14. So this is the fun of copying 70 numbers between. Um, okay, and then 520 is going to be tagit. Who the hell came up with these stupid names? And that is 2.5. At this point I'm getting the feeling that it would be actually be more accurate to cut and paste than to try to find these like this. Comma. Chaldean should be moon number 521. It is. But this is the wrong... Okay. Alright, now see, this is Chaldean is here. Okay. It's 1.9, but I'm getting tired enough of this that it's not going to be... Um, yeah. So I, I don't think we're going to do it this way. We're still going to try to get this data into uh, into C-Spice, uh, but um, in a different way. Normally I would bring this up in numeric which is a spreadsheet, but I don't think I have it here. In fact, I know I don't have it here because it takes a little bit of extra work to install. I might be able to get away with using LibreCalc. Or, I'm sorry, um, LibreOffice, I guess? And then LibreCalc is something inside of it, so... Um, I have not much faith this is going to work. Control-C. Control-V. Let's go ahead and do automatic. Um, clicked OK. Oh my god. Well, that's not too bad. It actually worked. Um, and by the way, for some of the, the, uh, the correct and proper satellites, uh, it does have the all three parameters, but for the smaller ones, it does not. So, um, and those, so this is not exactly great, but it is tolerable. Um, this actually might be okay. Uh, the only thing I'm seeing here is we've got some extra columns in some of these. Um, I'm going to put a delineator here, so um, so if you say anything more, which you're free to do, uh, I won't miss it. Okay. All right, so this actually might be okay here. We, 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 we're probably okay here. All right, so what we're going to do here is, first thing we're going to do is we're going to save as. Um, and I guess we'll use today's calendar. Um, I guess we'll call it uh, radi CSV. <sighs> use ODF format. Okay, for right now we'll save it in ODI format. ODF format. We'll fix that later. Okay, so now that we've done that, we do not need this column, which is actually just confusing. Um, be gone. Um, okay, and we do not need actually any column to the right of this, which I think is more than enough. Um, okay. We do not need whatever the hell this is. Um, and we do not need... Oh, your mama. What the hell was that? What the hell? Okay. That was kind of weird. Okay. Oh, cause do I have too many columns selected? Um, anyway, we probably do not need... We don't need the first seven column. In fact, we probably don't even need column nine and eight. But let's go ahead and delete rows. Okay. Alrighty. Rows. No. Okay. 
Deleting and merge ranges is not well. Go fuck yourself. All right, hang on. Now can you delete my rows? Piece of crap. All right, whatever. We're going too far with this anyway. All right. So whatever the hell this is. Oh, I guess now that I want to do control save, it just saves it to the existing file. Ta-da. Okay. So now, we still need to know which uh, satellites we don't have, um, and they're not going to be in order here either, so this is not as helpful as I thought. Um, but I think, let's see. Um, I think I, mean, I think this is actually all the satellites between 5.17 and uh, you know the ending one um, so if that's true we don't have to worry too much but, but I could be wrong about that there might be like a skip in here somewhere um, so this is line well we'll, we'll figure this out okay um, Adresta Maltia I guess we'll start at 7... Oh, we can't even do that, can we? What we're going to do, basically, is we're going to add a column here. I'm going to go ahead and save this as CSV to make sure I can actually use it. Um, use text CSV format. Just do whatever the hell you want with it. Um, and then let's make sure that we can use it. Uh, let's see if we can find our uh, X term. I probably can't. There it is. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. All right. So let's see if it saved that as a, as a, a CSV file correctly, because that's what we're going to have to end up using. Um, okay, interesting. Did it accidentally save it to the main directory? It does look like it did that. that I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay, well, that funky looking character stuff is ugly, but I don't think it's going to kill us. Oh god, we don't need the orbital parameters either. Hang on. So, this is a very simple um, import operation that has gone horribly wrong. So, uh, delete. you better let me delete these rows, you piece of shit. Um... So, assuming I can get around to ever actually doing anything with this, the idea is in column C, we will put the, uh, the moon name, because that's, that's the thing we're actually going to need, um, and get it to match up with the, the other moon name here. Um, so that should be fun. And then we have to make sure that we only add these radii uh, for moons that don't already have radii. Uh, we, we don't want to necessarily... We don't want to overwrite any value in spice, uh, so we need to be careful. But I think we can, I think we can, um, we can get away with, uh, we can handle that after the fact. So, um, okay. You know what? I'm just going to use the full path name here. Okay, and then we'll start at 517. And now, God willing, it'll just be a matter of copying these numbers to over here in the correct columns, uh, in the correct rows. Uh, of course, it won't really be that easy because everything sucks. Um, actually, I can make this column a little bit wider so I don't have to deal with... And can I get rid of these new lines? Oh, I get the feeling that's not going to be a good idea. I mean, I can do it, but I mean... Um, so, da da da. Cata hoopy. We can just do this, I think. There we go. Now it's getting to be. And that's 517. Themisto. Okay. 
That's going to be 518. Mega or Magaclite, depending on how you spell it. That's going to be 519. And then Tayget. Yeah, none of these. Oh, there we are. Tayget's actually okay. 520. Uh, Chaldean. What? Are these in any order? Oh, so I have to do... Okay, that's how, that's how I do it. 521. Uh, Harpa. And if you think there's a better way of doing this, I, I'm convinced there is. 522. I guess we could do a matching... Um, We could look at the first word, the radius, and then try to do a join against the second column of of the NAIF ID file, um, which might end up taking longer than what I'm doing right now. Um, I guess we could also go in the other direction here. Actually, let me let me do that. Uh, let me just try to find the names of these things as we go along. Uh, Adriesta. Yeah, all right. Some of these, in theory, the number should be a giveaway. Like XX. God damn, these are not in any... I thought these would be in some some sort of order. Um, I might be able to force the issue by putting them in alphabetical order. Um... Hmm. The only thing I don't like about doing all of this is whenever you do something by hand, there's a there's a chance you'll f it up. Um, so if I can do it without doing it by hand, that would be fantastic. Um, although doing it by alphabetical order and then kind of copying that shouldn't be too bad. But but anyway. Anyway, let's try seeing if we do it by hand, and we will use uh, the um, we will try to use the join command because that is actually more difficult and therefore uh, more interesting. So let's see what we can do here. All right, so we do have. Let's go and uh, here. Okay. Oh, what? Okay. All right. So this has some uglinesses to it, um, and it also has the extreme ugliness that some of these things have commas inside them already. But I think we can get around that. Um, oh, and I guess I did add some numbers to some of these, so that's kind of bad too. But I can get rid of those. Um, okay. And again, if you're thinking, hey, haven't you spent more time trying to figure out how to do this cleverly than you could have done it manually? And the answer is absolutely yes. That is just absolutely correct. And it looks like some of these are going to have a second parameter. Oh, no, I got rid of that. Um, so these should all be radiuses and names and maybe a column I added, which I can get rid of. Not a problem. Um, um, let's see. So how are we going to clean this up? I think if we get rid of everything in parentheses, that's a pretty good start. Um, and since we're going to build up something here, let's go ahead and go into a let's create a um, a one-liners dot you know a shell file here. Um, Or a question mark, end parentheses, nothing, and print dollar sign, and that will be applied to our radi1 CSV file. And we're also going to get rid of the AOs in just a sec, but that's not as important right now. So now we can just do this. Let's see what this gives us. That's better. That's much better. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, some of these looks like they're wiped out completely by this change. So 
I guess some of these lines were blank to begin with. This is going to be a freaking nightmare. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Again, I think I'm now gone way past the point where this is inefficient, but I'm okay with that. Um, so really, we're just looking at this column here. Let's see. Well, I think we might be able to get like 99% of them through this method. Um, oh, and I guess I need to fix this to be... Um, yeah, this is... This is very ugly. All right. Let me try bringing it up in LibreCalc again, really briefly. Um, I want to delete this. I'm going to delete that. Calc spreadsheet. I wonder if I can load an HTML page indirectly. And I also wonder if I care. It's going to do a select all on the whole page. Control C. Control V and I think that part went okay. Um, so now I need to do a save as because we're going CSV with this thing. So this is two problems with this one. Yes. Second um, we're going to turn it into a CSV file. So let's see what that does. Now again, I tried to save it into this directory, but um, for some reason it didn't do that because, well, because it hates me. So this one is the correct version, but let's see what it looks like right now. Right now it looks pretty horrible. Um, which is probably okay. Okay. So now we need to get to column B. Um, and then actually we need to get rid of every column uh, except the first two. So I don't know how far this goes, but delete columns. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Delete columns. Okay. And before we go too far, I'm going to go ahead and save this as. God damn it. I meant to do save as. But let's see what this did. Okay, this is actually a little bit better. Uh, we just have now the radius, radiuses and the names of the, the moons. Um, now I... Do I want to just leave it like this? Well, I want to get rid of this. That's not a huge deal. And I also want to get rid of rows those rows. Good deal. And then there's a bunch of other rows here that talk about orbital parameters, uh, which are not necessary to us right now and will actually confuse us. So we'll get rid of those as well. There's a lot of these motherfuckers. All right. All righty. So this should be fine now. It doesn't have any of my mess in it. Uh, so we're going to save on that. Okay, it is Pomodoro time. I'm taking this one back in two and two.
almost back. And we are still almost back. And we're back. Okay. So now we have... Still pretty ugly, but yeah, we're getting there. So now let's see if we can apply one-liners to this. See what that does. Nope, still in the wrong directory. So we'll go ahead and copy that from above, and it will overwrite the current. Yep, I want to overwrite the current version, and then I want to look at the one-liners here. Okay. So the other stuff we need to get rid of is the space, the quotes, um, the unprintable characters, and we need to uppercase the whole thing. So we can probably do a lot of that um, right here. So the f well, after we do well, it doesn't really matter if we do it before or after the parentheses. Um, not space to tilde means all of the unprintable characters will be replaced with nothing. So let's run that. Getting better. And I guess I can get rid of all the um, quotes, spaces, and commas as well, which I could have probably, I could probably combine some of this stuff. Um, get rid of the spaces. Get rid of the, I don't want to go to the commas, but I do want to go to the quotation marks. And then I want to uppercase the whole thing so we can get a match going. So let's see what this does. That is not bad, actually. That is not bad. <coughs> I mean, some of these are going to be pointless, but... Um, yeah, that's looking, that's looking okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this file, um, being brilliant, radi2.csv. Um, a lot of these, of course, are not going to... And then we probably actually need to, to sort this. I know, we're creating unnecessary files now, but what the hell, I don't care. Oh, and I probably should have done a sort minus unique here, but actually I think I'm okay with not doing that. So now, so now the question is that now that we have all this, how are we going to, um, how is this useful to us? Uh, well, now we can do this grep, um, this thing, and what we need from here is the name and the NAFE ID, because those are the things we're going to join. Ooh, I did not see that before. Right, okay, but anyway. Um... And so we're going to need the name and the NAFE ID, and I think we can do this as... Um, I'm, I'm going to regret trying to do this in one. Eh, you know what? Let's not even try to do it in one. Um, so this... sorted with uniqueness is going to be radi 3 CSV, and if we need to make it more than once, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and do that to make sure we got it right. So now we run it. Raid i3 is created automatically. I'm going to create a um, a blank. Okay, now that's not good. Um. See what that does. Uh, oh, you know what? Because I need to specify an input file. Uh, previously, I was just sort of doing that. Um, or was I? Wait, hang on. Um, yeah, I think that's radi1.csv I need for that. All right, let's do this again. Should take only. A f okay, I'm going to go ahead and create a um, a um, an empty BC priv aliases file. Usually, it's my private aliases which I don't want to share here, but I also don't like that uh, that error message showing up. So, read i3. Okay, gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Now, um, let's go ahead and comment this out briefly. Now we're going to do something uh, very similar 
to the NAFE ID file to the uh, to the Jupyter NAFE IDs inside the NAFE ID file, and so that would be a uh, grep. Five, well, what was my grep there? Grep space five dot dot space. Um, uh, out of NAFE IDs dot HTML pipe to for now right now let's see what this does and this is does not need an apostrophe here. Let's see what that does. Yep. Would be nice to give it a path. Okay, that's what that does. Okay, that's not what I want at all, but this is getting somewhere. Um, okay, that's really weird. Um, oh, I probably meant to say zero and one, and it's not going to be in that order, but those are the fields we need. So let's see if we can get those. There we go. So now what we want to do... Well, we need to get rid of all the apostrophes. Um, we need to flip the two fields, and we need to put a comma between them. So that's not too difficult. Um, now the problem here is, if we're going to do an automated split, we can't... It would be nice if we could do something like this, um, substitute all instances of apostrophes for nothing globally. This should not work. Uh, because once you do an auto split, you can no longer, if you're modifying the thunk, won't do anything. You have to actually modify the field uh, that you want to change. So that should do something. Gorgeous. Then I'm going to sort this sucker and call it... Um, Wait. There's still some missing, aren't there? Um, Alright, well, we'll have to deal with those later. Okay, sort minus u. And that will become radi 4csv Let's do that. So what's the point of having these files, you might ask? Um... And, and the, how many does this have? Okay. How many does this one have? Okay. So the point now is because, because these things have the same um, first column, we can now use the Unix join command uh, to see, to try to get both the radius and the NAFE ID out of them at the same time. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. So I think it's join. Um, well, let's go ahead and test it over here. Um, <laughs> and comma is our separator, and we just need to give the two um, files. And this is going to give us more information than we actually need, but th that's okay. Um, yeah, so you can see here that it combines the two, the two fields. We have, it combines the two files uh, by putting in, um, by putting in um, the NAFE ID body name uh, where, uh, where we need, uh, I into the, ra with the radius. So we now, this gives us our translation uh, from radius to, um, now you'll notice there's only 49 files here, uh, 49 lines here, because not everything's going to have a match, uh, partly because we have that misspelling, uh, but other reasons as well. But so this is pretty good. This is pretty close to what we want. We want the, uh, we have the, the name, we have the uh, radius, and we have the NAFE ID. So we could, from here, create stuff. There's a, um, I'm tempted to just do this now, but let's see. Um, Oh yeah, there is another problem, and that is, um, there's no radi1, okay. So no radi1 tells us the files that have no radi, and no radi2 I think is just a piece of crap. Oh no, it's not. Uh, no radi2 is, um, is the uh, list of for just Jupiter, oh actually it's Jupiter, Saturn, okay, it's a bunch of them. Um, so the problem is, um, we don't necessarily want to get the radi for everything, just for the missing stuff. So, 
this. Let's see if this works. Okay, so this, we just want to do an F grep. So let's do a word count on this. And then let's only look at the stuff that uh, doesn't have radii, because we don't want to do the ones that do have radii. Um, and that's 34 of them, so that actually is probably more sensible. So these are the ones that uh, don't have radii, and some of them at least. And so this is actually the file we want to be doing the combination with. Um, Um, let's just make double sure by, yeah, there we are, by looking at the uh, the moon numbers, and you'll see they start at 517 and they go up to 550, uh, but we don't include it in the lower moon numbers for which we already have this. So let's go ahead and, yes, we're going to create another file, because that's what we do, man. Um, and let's see, radi so that's going to create radii 6. These aren't in really any order, obviously. Um, so radii 6 will be the ones that have... Um, and now... I know this is brilliant. Um, I'm tempted to almost do a make file for these, but I don't think I'm going to be changing any of them, so I don't think I need to do that. Um, but that would be another way to keep these under control. Alright, so this is 34 moons. Uh, with their NAFE IDs. And radii 4 is... Nope, wrong. Radii 3 is the moons with their radiuses. So after all this, we can do this. And this, God willing, will give us um, the file we can use to create the bodies file. So this is, in this case, name, um, radius, and, um, and NAFE ID. And let's see. Do I want to run any more tests on these? I think I do, actually. And let's just do a using comma as the separator. Let's just look at the third field and sort by it. Whoa. Okay, 517 to 550 would be 34. Uh, we have 34, so we're missing one. Um, uh, I'm kind of curious as to which one now. Huh. Wait. 716? 19. We're missing 519. And I think 519 is the mega, the one that has the mega versus MAGA issue. Make America great again. Um, yeah, it is. Okay, so mega flight. We, we'll fix that one later. Okay, so this file now that we finally have, this we can use to create our, uh, our uh, file. How do we do this? Well, well, what the hell, let's put it in here as well. Um, we will be acting on radi7.csv. And so now we can say, um, we're going to use the comma as our separator. And so now we're going to print body, and then the, uh, the name of the, uh, the NAFE ID is dollar sign $F2. Um, and because we're going to put the word radi right after it, we need to do this. Uh, equals, parentheses, and since we're only using one radi for all of these, I think... Okay, let me double check that though. I'm almost sure that's correct though, because the only ones that have more than one radi are the uh, are the um, are the what they call the lesser satellites. But all of these are ones that are already in uh, the PCK file. So yeah, we're fine. Okay. So, and what's the the one we're using here? It's going to be number one, right? F. Dollar sign F one. Dollar sign F one. And I don't even think we need to put a return here because that's automatic I think. So let's see what this does. Um, I think this is actually I want that sorted. Why isn't that sorted? Wait. Wait by seven. Oh it's sorted by name not by um, not by number. 
Um, okay. Um, that was unusually painful. Okay, let's call that jupe1.txt. And I am willing to believe that no number higher than 16 is already in the PCK file. Oh, but now we need to deal with um, 551 and up, which are, which are here, but they're kind of listed funny. Um, so these are not, these don't have names necessarily. And we also need to de deal with mega whatever it is, but that one we can handle separately. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so where is Celine? Which sounds like Celine Dion, but... Um, oh, 548? Hang on. I might be oh, that's right, that's XL. So we need LX or something. Um, okay, well that's number 50 itself, but let's see if there's one after that. It might not be. Okay, so no, Hearst is the last one that's named. Um, I could have sworn that the NAFE IDs went further than this. They're just not called five something. Um, so let's do this real quick. All right, Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay. So I believe that in addition to um, these satellites, oh wow, I guess where are the rest of Jupiter satellites? They are listed. Um, and when I say they are listed, I mean they're not listed. Okay. Okay. 
I am pretty darn sure though we have um, these unlisted satellites do have they're they're somewhere and I can't seem to remember where they are. Um, it's gonna bug me now. Uh, they might be in the PCK file. Um, I seem to remember the... <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now, I know they're somewhere because we somehow got them into our list of um, into the list of uh, IDs that are exist in NAIF somehow. Um, so I'm actually kind of curious how we did that now because we because we did create this list of uh, let's find it real quick. Oh, I can't do that. Can I? It'll Oh, it did work. Okay. Body list in BC Max kernel. Um, and so we clearly do have numbers higher than 550 here. So let's take a look at BC Max kernel again and see where the hell I'm getting these. Um, and it may just be that the BSP files list these, which would be horrible because it's going to be a hell to find them from there. But I'm hoping maybe... Um, this thing here, uh, even if it doesn't actually, um, it won't give the radii of these, but even if it just gives the, um, the gravity, if it gives anything on them, it would be useful. And I'm not seeing that. Nope. Not happening. Um, by the way, I do want to at some point get a some sort of a gravity simulator that runs on Linux and run it against NASA's numbers. Uh, not because NASA is less accurate, but just to see how accurate it is compared to NASA. Okay, so now I guess we're going to have to look at the program that I used to get the freaking um, list kernel vars. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, spice cell, and that's a, um, okay, max kernel, spice and count, k total c, files loaded, create strings, hold IDs for given kernel, so this is for each file. Uh, show me the body uh, something. Spice cell LMI IDs J. Oh, wow. So this literally just gives me the IDs. Uh, I'm probably not happy about that. Um, let's see. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess this just extracts the IDs, but it doesn't actually look for any variables inside of the IDs, which kind of is okay because the, the BSP files do have IDs in them, but that is just really bad behavior, I think. All right, so let's go ahead and go look at, for Jupiter at least, um, one second here. All right, for Jupiter at least, we can actually look at the comments. I wonder if I have the comment files also, but I do not. Um, the comments for um, whichever one of the Jupiter files, uh, which has got to be 
343, I guess. And see if that lists the, um, the NAFE IDs of the unnamed satellites. Uh, da -da 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 -da. There we are. Um, so this gets uglier. And apparently some of them have somehow gained names magically. Um, so the question is, do we have these? There's more than there's more than that, but okay. So can I cross the the the, the, the question is can I cross identify these to the page where they have the radi assist is listed? Um, and actually, do do I actually have these? Oh, I do have them. Okay. Um, so S two thousand and three. Um, yeah, I guess I guess we do have them here. Um, they're not listed in the NAFE IDs file, but they are listed here. Um, so I guess I could get them from here. Um, but I bet the question here is going to be that in the, um, in the other file, the file where, um, the file that I copied off the site is going to have them listed differently. Um, if at all. Well, no, it does have them. All uh, right, so it's 2003 G. This is actually not too bad, but um, still very ugly. Um, okay. So the unnamed satellites with their radiuses, I need to convert these to NAFE IDs. Can I do this? Um, using this. The answer, I guess, is maybe. See, these don't even have Roman numerals with them. Um, um, so does this have, like, Dia listed? Dia is a named satellite. No, it doesn't. Okay, fun. Um, okay. The nice thing is for the unnamed satellite, it looks like there's nothing other than just the... Um, just the radiuses. Alrighty. So I guess for maybe for just these, I'm going to have to do them manually. So let's go back over here to Mr. Spreadsheet. We're going to do a file save as um, 2020 0312 tough shit. That's CSV. Okay. And then we can get rid of most of these rows uh, until we get down to the unnamed values. Here we go. Alrighty. Assuming we can get the other stuff back, we're in good shape. Here we go. Alright, so these might actually be a little bit better because they might also we might have some sort of order for them. Uh, at least. Maybe. I don't even know anymore. Okay. So if I da -da 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 -da. So I guess the first ones it's going to want to list are the 2003 satellites. Um, okay, so we can maybe even do a grep 2003 out of here. Oh good, not all of them are listed, because that would be just too easy. Um, J, well I can sort them I guess if I'm going to do that. I don't think this is even going to work, but let's try it. No, it's not because it's not really numerical. All right, all right, all right. Mm. Ten. Why do I even bother? 
12, not 11. Okay, that one's suspiciously correct. 15, not going to list it. 16. This is a nightmare. This is why they never did this. It's difficult. 18 is 555. Five. 19 is 561. 23 is this sucker here. I can't paste anything that's apparently any bigger than uh, three characters. All right, so we have 10, 12, 16, 10, 12, 16, 18, 19, 23, and then 2, 4, and 9. So 2, 4, that's this one, not row 4, and 9. Yeah, that's not confusing at all. All right, so I guess we don't have J3. I can do a, I guess I can do a, actually, let me see if it's in the other one. I mean, it, it should not be, but yeah. The bodies on file here are the really, the sort of cool ones. Um, okay, what else can we do here? Um, I guess the other ones are the 2010. Okay, we can maybe get those. Those are the only two? Those are the only two. So I don't even need to do a grep for those. So 2010 J1 is 551. J2 is 552. Oh, the 2011 ones. Okay, that's that's actually okay too. I'll probably get those. 572 for the first one. Why not? Uh, 556 for the second one. And then the 2016 ones, I guess I can do a grep here. Alrighty, so the 2016 ones, the first one is 554 and the second one is 562. Beautiful. So now the 2017 ones, should be a lot of fun. Um, 559, 563, 564. Uh, n four isn't listed, but then five becomes five six six. Kind of wonder if it'd be five six five, but I'm not going to say anything. J six is five six seven. J seven is five six eight. J eight is five six nine, and J nine is five seventy. And then the 2018 satellite t singular is not listed. Um. Let's see if there's any other jupe kernels I've missed. Now those seem to be it. Um, so the question is, did 572 um, did 571 th this isn't actually too bad. Um, did numbers like 571 and 572 um, make it into our list of um, max kernel uh, bodies in yeah there we are and apparently it did somehow we got 572 in there um, and um, I'll do a grep 572 oh hang on Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, something tells me that even if you were to sort this, uh, you would not have everything. You would be missing... Is there a 553 in here? Okay, there is not a 553. Let's see if there's a 553 in here. There is. So somehow we got 553 in here. Stand by. Oh, fuck. Okay, cool. We have Dia. Uh, so these are the named satellites that apparently didn't have names earlier, but somehow man mag managed to gain names. This should kill me. Uh, alrighty. So we'll start with... So Dia... Oh, my God. All right. We're going to do our standard little uh, trick here. 
Dia e rin ufemi. This should be more than enough. Oh, okay. Uh, can we get a list of these suckers? Uh, come on. The problem is the chance for human error is very high, and it's even higher because I'm the human in this equation. Um, okay, there might be a list here on this Wikipedia page. Um, here we go. Um, I'm not going to go through these one at a time. Although apparently I might have to. I wonder if um, Wolfram Alpha can be of any help here. Probably not, because even for something as weird as Irene, I get the feel. Yeah. Alright. Jesus fucking Christ. Alrighty. I hate that my life is so dull that this is actually still technically okay with me. Alright. Alrighty, alright, alright. Let's look for Dia. Well, I guess this is where you Femi. We can. Originally known as uh, 2003 J3. This is now going to be. Ufemi. Ufemi. What the hell? One. Okay, did not mean giant Ufemi. I meant just freaking. This is a freaking CSV file. Alright, let me see how that saves. I mean, how can that be anything but. Um, I mean, oh, I think I renamed it, didn't I? Oh, and I think I even put it in the right directory. Woohoo! Okay, so even though it shows up giant, it's because this is a, um, um, no, don't do any of that. Get rid of this. How do I say get rid of all font styling? Yeah, this is going to kill me. Hang on. Let's see if we can... This might at least be a little bit better. So Femi, once known as S2003J3. You know what? Screw it. All right, Pomodoro, back in two and two.
almost back. And we're back. Okay. So that was Euphemi. Um, I wonder if Euphemi's like in some part of a group that we can. Um, I guess we should start with uh, Dia. That's going to be an easy one to find, eh? Pendia? No. Dia! 2000J11. Wait, good, good, don't, don't be listed here. Yes! I think we have found one that... Yeah, we can't even bother to list here. Cool. Um... Yeah, 2000J11. We don't have any of the 2000s listed here. That is awesome. Okay, screwed that one. Irene. Come on, Irene. That's the Japanese version. That's probably offensive. Um, 2003J5. That one we do have. Jesus Christ. Uh, and I guess I'll make this a bit wider. We only need these names to, to cross-reference to um, to the, the chart here. So actually, let's just go ahead and do that. Um, Euphemi was 560. And Irene was 557. And... Philosopher number moment. Let's do that one next. It sounds like it has something to do with philosophy, which it might. Uh, 2003 J15. And I guess we will go ahead and cut and paste the name just because we want to be accurate. Pain in the ass. Um, so philosopher is 558. We had another problem with that one that we will be getting back to later, maybe, if I don't kill myself over this. Alrighty, Philosophy Euphemia, we did Pandia. Pandia. J J4. Is Pandia. Which is... 565. Well, those actually have sort of an ordering sequence there, so I'm very happy about that. Um, Ursa. Not like the bear, but that's the last one at least. Okay. Ursa. Oh, I could have just hovered. 2018 J1. And that will be 571. So this is actually a blank line, so we can delete this. And do we get all of them? Oh my god. Yes, apparently we do have all of them now. In the most painful possible way. We have 572? Oh, we did. We had 572 earlier. I think it was up here somewhere. Where you wouldn't expect it. Yeah. Alright. So I have now saved this to a uh, CSV file. And we can now look at this. Um. Okay. Oh, and it looks like we actually have the, uh, the radiuses in there as well. Um. So it's, we need two and three. All right. Oh, let's go ahead and do it in here. 
Perl minus A and L E uh, minus F comma, because we're using that as our separator. Um, let's just first just get the ones we want to make sure we have them. And we'll call this tough shit dot CSV. Alrighty. Oh, one liners dot TCS. Good, I named it correctly. Uh, what the hell am I doing? Thing is not. I think I actually have to do it th like this. It has to be the separator has to come before the A and L E. Yeah. All right. So then, what we want is, of course, the we want them in the other order. But we want body dollar sign F two radii equal. All right, see what this does. That's not too bad, actually. And, well, if we sort this, it might even be better. Oh, that is nice. Um, I think we'll call that jupe2. So jupe1 and jupe2 are going to be the things that... Um, where did I put jupe1 here? didn't. Shit. How did I get jupe 1 then? Is radii 7 jupe 1? No. Uh, oh, this one is actually jupe 1. So, let's do both of these. I don't even need to sort anymore. All right, so these are going to be the um, these are going to be the files we can add. I think I want Jupe one sorted also. One more time. All right, so these are the files we can add. Uh, to see spice to let it know what the radiuses are, are of these tiny little moons here. Uh, together we'll, we'll combine them, of course. And now we need to do something similar for Saturn, uh, Uranus, um, well, I think only Saturn. I think the others, um, there aren't any missing ones, although uh, we actually can check. Um, now, apparently, there are some for Uranus and Neptune and Pluto. Fun, fun. Okay. Um, so very ugly procedure there for for Jupiter. Uh, probably going to be equally ugly for Saturn, and I'm still not really super happy uh, with what we have done here. It was very, very ugly. So what we kind of would like to do um, is maybe... Uh, the goal here is to sort of find a merge file between um, this page that we had on the uh, on on Firefox. We can find it again. Um, this sucker here, and um, and the NAFE IDs. I mean, this sort of kind of gives it away, but not exactly. Um, so that's that's what it'd be nice to have, like something like, um, you know, Phyllis the Frantra or S two thousand three J seventeen, blah blah blah. Some something there that would indicate that that's the same moon I that um, that Spice refers to as Philanthropopalababa or whatever. So very very ugly here. This is just truly. Um, truly hideous. And the big problem is, of course, I'm worried that I've made some sort of error, even though I tried to keep with, um, I tried to keep with as many, um, I tried to keep things as clean as possible. Let me check something here real quick. Do we act? oh, we do have a very nice sort of, uh, 
little table structure here we could have used. So maybe that's what I should have done. Okay. All right. Um, so maybe we'll try that next time. Um, ooh, so we already have this. Okay, hang on. Um, do that. Come on, don't we have one for Saturn? Come on. Damn it. Uh, Saturn satellite fact sheet. Saturnian uh, satellite. So let's go ahead and do this one. And now they're using little tildes here, even though they didn't do that before. And let's copy that one over. Yeah, we might actually be able to do a much better job by parsing these like this. And then how about Uranian? Uranus satellite fact sheet. Should that have been plural? Nice. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, save that. And we are changing the name slightly, but I'm okay with that. Um, and we might actually want to make a little subdirectory here to deal with these. Um, uh, NAIF ID work. So let's move Jupiter, moons, Saturn, moons, Uranus, moons, to NAIF ID work. Let's go there ourselves. And so now we will, of course, do Neptune satellite fact sheet. I probably should be, at the very least, be bookmarking some of these. I'm not going to put any sort of notes there, but... Uh, and we will copy that. We will call it Neptune Moons. And then finally... Actually, there might be more. Um, cause I think there are items that are for... Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, okay, so this might actually be... No, that doesn't help us. I mean, Pluto technically doesn't have, well, it's not a planet anymore. Plutonian? Saturnian? Um, okay, well, all right, let's look for Charon on their site, because I know that's a Plutonian moon. <sighs> And let's look for the word fact sheet. Maybe it'll show up somewhere. Uh, oh, actually, this might be on the Pluto fact sheet. Let's just make sure, though. Orbital parameters. Da, 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 da. Charon. Other moons of Charon. Oh, yeah, we do. We This does give... This is a little bit different in terms of format. Um, but it, it does give the information we need. Uh, in fact, we could probably just copy this directly because these are these are semi-major. Sorry, these are triaxial ellipsoids. Um, so let's just go ahead and copy this, and then we'll say all right. So is Eris one of these moons, or is it not um, considered a moon? It is not. Okay. So, I wonder where Eris shows up in the, um, if that's even, ooh. 
Okay, maybe I need a newer version of this the, this this ID sheet. Eris Snape ID. Oh, must include Eris. Uh, apparently, they don't have. Um, Oh, Eris is now probably considered an asteroid. Wow, I missed Welcome Spice Tutorials. The dwarf planets are. Is that a PDF? Let's find out. It is. Uh, so let's take a quick look at that. The dwarf planets. There we go. All right, Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. So I guess um, okay. The dwarf planets are blah 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 blah. God damn it. Okay, so this does not tell us what NAF IDs we're going to be assigning to them. Um, so that's kind of crappy. Uh, but okay. So I've been streaming now for motherfucking two hours. Uh, and part of that was when I was not fucking my mother. So I think I'm going to call it now. This is clearly uh, much worse than I expected. I thought this would be a very easy thing to do. Uh, we would take care of it very quickly. Uh, and that didn't happen. Uh, but it's still somewhat useful uh, because it does allow us to try to compute some additional um, additional occultations that maybe no one has computed before because they've not had the tools to do it. Uh, and certainly that is that is something to look work work at. And, and do and it might turn out that it nothing ever happens but it given the wide span of Jupiter and Saturn's moons there's a possibility that we'll see like an occultation that we wouldn't otherwise expect to see thank you for watching the stream and I will see you guys later maybe